Here's what the word of the Lord says to us this morning. The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. Somebody say joy this morning. Joy. joy is a very important part of this passage. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance and divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the mute tongue will shout for joy. Somebody say joy. joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become like a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in the way. Wicked fools will not go on it. No lion will be there, nor ferocious beasts get up on it. There they will not be there, but only the redeemed will walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter into Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Somebody say joy this morning. Joy. Getting excited just from reading this. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sigh will flee away. Let's pray this morning. Jesus, we thank you for your word. And I pray that as we listen to what you're speaking through the prophet Isaiah, that we would be changed, that we wouldn't leave here like we came, but we would leave changed in Jesus' name. God, I pray that I would decrease so that you can increase. Lord, your word is sharper than any double-edged sword, and we know that it can change things. We pray this in your name. Let the church God say amen. 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 So I'm really glad my father-in-law is here this morning because he would remember where we were about nine years ago. Uh, Von Treese and I were about to get married. We were young, without kids. <laughs> we love our kids, but we were young and without kids. It was a good, you know, it was, it was a good time. We were, we met in March of 2013 and we were friends and pastor was like, we can just be friends forever and ever and ever and then one day we decided we should probably put a name on it. Anybody know that a name on it is sometimes good? Yeah. And so uh, we started dating in July, and the next week we decided we should get married. Let's just get married. How quickly should we get married? Let's try to get married by December. And that started off a crazy sprint to the finish line. Our whole family got together, and they planned a wedding in just a few months. Now, Pops, you remember how quickly all that happened. Yeah. I remember. I just showed up in your yard one day, and I was like, you don't know me. I don't know you. Can I marry your daughter? And I remember Pops just gave me this long look, and I finally said, I'm a minister. He's like, okay, you're good. You're good. You're good. So we planned this whole wedding, and it was wonderful. We had all of our family and our loved ones there. It was a beautiful ceremony. My brother-in-law did our ceremony. And then we, we had a great wedding reception in Winter Haven. Now, I come from a family that when we get together, we like to have tea and crumpets and just kind of be, be quiet. <laughs> We're not English, but we did grow up in Sarasota. There's a lot of English people there. So we like kind of peaceful gatherings. You know, we're not very loud. We, we don't get up and do much. Now, my wife's family, they have a good time when they get together. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody come from one of those families, whether it's a birthday party or whether you just see each other at Burger King, you are going to have a good time. Anybody out there like that? So we get to the reception, and I'm just like, you know, I don't really dance. So 
we're going to do our first dance, and now I'm going to go sit down. And, I'm, I, and, I, and I told my wife, I said, you know, pay your family respect. I don't necessarily want a ton of dancing at the wedding reception. That's just a lot. My people, we don't really do that. And, of course, my wife's like, yeah, it, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll just do our first dance. I'm sure everyone will sit down. Well, I did not really know my mother-in-law all that well yet. My mother-in-law likes to dance. In fact, all of her children and grandchildren, all of her cousins, aunties, uncles, people who they say are cousins but aren't blood-related, they all like to dance. <laughs> so there was a bit of a lull in the reception. We're, we're going good. Finally, I'm eating some cake. And I see my mother-in-law out of the corner of my eye. She gets up, and she goes to the dance floor. Now, I'm like, Lord Jesus, I hope she's just getting up there to make a speech. <laughs> And then the DJ, it was as if she had spoken him, starts to play the wall. No. And I began to say, Lord Jesus, <laughs> no. And before I know it, her grandkids are up dancing with her. Her cousins are up dancing with her. Half the room gets up. And then, to my shock, our bishop got up and started wobbling as well. <laughs> and everybody was dancing. It was as if when Mamma got on that dance floor and got to dancing, she let everyone know it's time to get this party started. Anybody like a little bit of joy sometimes, have a little bit of fun sometimes? My, 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 my mother-in-law knows how to have a good time. And, and that reception became fun and joyful because she let everyone kick back and experience some pure joy. And for the next hour and a half, I was sitting by myself, trying to get people to sit down with me. But man, they were having a good time. Now, if we're all being honest, we all have a desire to feel a little bit of joy sometimes. Amen? Amen. We, we all need a little bit of uh, time to experience some happiness. You know, as we scurry through uh, work and school and practice and the holidays, joys and sorrows and health and sickness, we all need something that makes us a little bit happy, right? Uh, does anybody like a little bit of happiness and joy in the midst of all of your business? Uh, and when we try to find joy in so many ways, uh, maybe you like to go out fishing. There's nothing wrong with trying to go catch a little bit of dinner. Fishing is good. Uh, maybe you try to find some joy by going to, to concerts. Uh, we went to the hip hop nutcracker yesterday in Sarasota. Nothing wrong with a little bit of concerts and hearing your favorite artists in person. Uh, maybe you like to have some joy by spending time with family. There's nothing wrong with spending some time with your loved ones. Or, or maybe you're like my son, where when you want to have a good time, you don't need people. You just need an Xbox and a controller. Amen? Amen. 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 Or if you're like my daughter, she's like, well, I'm going to go have a good time. As long as she has her cell phone, she doesn't care what else is going on. Right, Tatiana? <laughs> we all like to find different ways to have joy in our lives. The only problem with these joys, if we're being honest this morning, Mother Guilford, is that they, they don't last forever, right? At some point, you got to go back to work. At some point, people have to go home and go to sleep. These joys, they don't last forever. And if we're being really, really honest this morning, it may even feel that sometimes the little bit of joy that we get to experience quickly gets ground out by our struggles, by our busyness, and by our work. All these things are our normal parts of life. But here's the good news this morning, and this is one of the things that Advent season reminds us about. There is joy this morning that is eternal. There is joy this morning that never runs out. Can I get a witness this morning? You see, there is a joy that's not rooted in this world, but it's rooted in heaven. There is joy this morning that's not rooted in money, it's not rooted in career, it's not rooted in music, but it's rooted in the spirit of God that is in you and I. There is joy that you and I can, speak, can experience this morning that's unspeakable joy. It's joy that's never ending. It's joy that doesn't run out. It's joy that you can experience even when you're going through a challenging time in life. It's that joy that bubbles up when the doctor's giving you a bad report and they're saying, whose report will you believe? And you say, I believe the report of the Lord. It's that joy you experience when people have told you you're a failure, but you look at your God and you say, I know that I'm a son and daughter of God in Jesus Christ. It's that joy that is that comes from God. It's that joy that you can't create. There is joy this morning 
and it comes from God. Can I get a witness this morning? This is what Isaiah is, is, is talking about this morning. He's, he's talking about a joy that is forever. We've been talking about Isaiah for the past few weeks, and we were reminded that he lived during a challenging time. Anybody ever lived during a challenging time? Let me say that again. Has anybody ever lived through a challenging time? Has anybody lived during a time where the minute you wake up, there's a mess on your hands? Anybody been through that? Anybody been through the situation where you turn on the news and things just look even worse than they did the day before? That was the time Isaiah was living. He, he had just seen God's people stray from him in a really disastrous way. Israel, the people of God, the people that had been led out of, Israel, of Egypt in slavery, the ones that God had freed and he created a nation for himself and called them his people. Those people had strayed from God. And they had gotten so bad that they decided to split into two different nations. It's as if East Barto and West Barto decided to become two different cities. Things were pretty bad. But if that wasn't bad enough, they had begun to worship other gods. They still worshiped God. They still had him. But, you know, when they went home in the evening, they worshiped some other gods. Uh, you know, we, we, we can sometimes do that. Sometimes we can come to church on Sunday, but then we can go back to our lives and we can worship money and we can, we can worship reputation and we can worship social media and we can allow other things to take the place of God. We can allow other things to take the place of God and they control us. Things were pretty bad in Israel at this time. And Isaiah is writing at a time where there's not a lot to be excited about. He's writing at a time where he shouldn't have much joy. However, Isaiah, because he's a prophet, he sees down the road. Because he's a prophet, he sees a new day coming where things will change. He sees a new day coming where joy will be overflowing. He sees a new day coming where the people of God will be back in right relationship with him. He can see down the road that better days are coming. Now, somebody in this house needs to hear that this morning. Better days are coming because we serve the God of the better day. We serve the God of the better future. We serve the God of the better health. We serve a God who is making all things new. So the good news that Isaiah tells us this morning is that there is joy that's coming, and it's coming forever. So what does Isaiah see in this new day? In this new day, Isaiah sees dying things experiencing new life. Somebody say new life. New life. You see, Isaiah sees a day where death and desolation and brokenness in the land goes away. He sees a day when God will bring new life to those things that are dying, just like God does to you and I. People might have counted you out. People might have told you that you're done, but God has not counted you out. God sees you in your brokenness, and he's causing dying things to live. Isaiah proclaims that in this new life, there will be a, a whole new earth, and the earth is going to display the glory and splendor of God. As God makes his presence known, Isaiah says he will bring justice to an unjust world. He will bring good into an evil world. And to those who are broken, Isaiah says this. He says, here's the good news. God's not going to leave you in your situation, but he's going to save you in your situation. Can I get a witness this morning? I don't know about you, but when God found me, I was in that Mari clay and God rescued me. Maybe you find yourself in not such a good situation this morning, but you need to hear the words of Isaiah. God will save you. And anybody need to be saved this morning? God will save you no matter where you're at. Isaiah sees a new day where dying things come to life, but he also sees a new day where God begins to reverse some things. Somebody say reverse. reverse. Isaiah sees a time down the road where things really begin to get messed up for good. You see, the new life that God brings to the earth is going to upend things as we know them. What does that mean? Well, Isaiah says that the blind are going to see. Those who can't hear, they're going to hear. Those who can't speak are going to speak. The desert will flourish. Dangerous places will become places of rest. If we extend that into our day, you'll see Democrat and Republican at the same table. You'll see black and white reconciled. You'll see rich and poor going to the same school. You'll see people walking as brothers and sisters rather than enemies. Isaiah sees a new day coming where God is going to reverse things. 
But in this new day, there's something really exciting. Isaiah says that God will make a way for those who walk in his way. Let me say that again. In this new day, God is going to make a way for those who walk in God's way. You see, Isaiah describes God's way as a highway that's called the way of holiness. Uh, Let me tell you a little bit more about this. It's a way for those who decide to follow Jesus that brings them new life. Uh, on that way called holiness, there will be no more danger. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more death there. As those on the way draw closer to God, the Bible tells us that they'll be overwhelmed by gladness and joy. You see, there's a beauty in holiness. There, there, there's a joy in following the Lord. You see, as I read Isaiah's words, I can't help but think, where are we finding our joy this morning? Things don't always look great, if we're being honest. Sometimes things can be challenging. Sometimes your kids frustrate you. Amen. Sometimes life can be a struggle. And there's a lot of different ways that you and I find joy, and they're not necessarily bad. Maybe we get a glimpse of joy when we're making a certain amount of money each year. Maybe we find a glimpse of joy when we have that career that we've been working so hard to have. Maybe we find some joy by being on social media, you know, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, maybe we find some joy with being with people. And there are so many other ways that we try to find joy. But I'm here to tell you this morning that while we can find glimpses of joy in this world, we will only find real joy in God this morning. Let me say that again. Your money might help you for a minute. People might say nice things to your face. Your career might get you to some places and it might be able to get you certain things. But real joy, everlasting joy comes from God this morning. You see, you don't have to look to things, but you can look to the one who made the things for your joy this morning. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody that needs some joy this morning? Is there anybody that needs to experience the God of joy this morning? You see, real joy came into the world 2,000 years ago. It didn't come as a king. It didn't come with some big announcement. It didn't come as the trendiest thing, but it came in the form of a baby boy. Uh, they, they called him Mary and Joseph's son. They called him that strange carpenter from Nazareth. They called him the Prince of Peace also. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. They called him the Lily of the Valley. They call him the one who saves, the one who transforms, the one who heals, the one who empowers, the one who reigns over all. They call him Emmanuel. They called him Joseph's son, but we call his name Jesus. You see, joy is with us this morning. His name is Jesus. If you're looking for joy, if you're looking for happiness this morning, look no further than Jesus. As long as you're rooted in him, you will find joy that's unspeakable. You'll find joy that travels with you no matter where you go. So what's the main point this morning? It's this. Real joy comes from God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. real joy comes from God. Look at your other neighbor. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, you look good. Real joy comes from God. Y'all do look good. You can, you can give yourselves a hand this morning. Mm. So as I'm preparing to close, we need to ask ourselves, how exactly does God give us joy? How do you and I experience joy as we're at school? How do we experience God as we're at our senior center? How do we experience God when we're in the holiday season? How do we experience God at any time of the year and in any season? The first thing is this. God gives us joy by making things right. Let me say that again. Where we can find joy is that God will make things right in your life. You know, it would be sad if the world we see is the world that will always be. Let me say that again. It would be sad if this world that we see with its brokenness and its conflict and its anger, it would be sad if that was all that was written and that was it. But here's the truth. When we decide to follow Jesus, we see that God is working things out for his, for our good. God is working out things for his purposes. When we decide to follow Jesus, we find that things are not so hopeless because God is setting things right. Now, uh, we have some people in, in the house this morning who are involved in the medical profession. And we know that sometimes people break bones. Anybody ever broken a bone in here? 
Big Cody, you did, but you you knocked the guy out, didn't you, when you hit him? That's what matters. That's what matters. That's what matters. I've broken a bone before. Broken bones are no fun. And one of the things I learned when I was a football coach is that sometimes you have to reset broken bones. You have to reset broken bones because it is often necessary so that the bone can regain its strength and do what it is meant to do. You see that when you reset bones, it, it makes it right. It allows it to have its full strength. You see, when God comes into our lives and into our world, he makes things right. Can I get a witness? You see, God sees our brokenness. He sees our shortcomings. But God makes all things right. He makes all things right. Where there's injustice, God brings justice. Where there's sickness, God brings healing. God makes all things right. That's why Isaiah says that God comes with vengeance and divine retribution. Now, we can read that and we can say, like, man, that seems like God is angry. God's not an angry God this morning, but he is a God who, when he sees evil and he sees brokenness, he comes and he does something about it. How many of you know that we serve a God that does something about the problems that we experience? He doesn't just leave us there. So, number one, God gives us joy by making things right. But number two, God gives us joy through new life. Somebody say new life. new life. You know, it's easy to look at ourselves in the mirror sometimes and wonder, am I too far gone? Do I cuss too much? Do I have some things in my past that aren't so good? Maybe I'm beyond repair. Maybe I'm so bad that God doesn't love me. Or even worse, maybe my life is so bad that God can't help me. You and I can rejoice this morning because God actually sees us for more than we could ever see ourselves. You see, God sees us for more than we could ever be on our own. God gives us new life, and that should cause us to have joy. You know, my grandfather, he uh, enjoyed going to auctions and buying old things. Anybody ever have a grandparent like that where in their retirement, what they like to do is they like to go to auctions and just buy old things? And my grandpa, he loved old things and collecting things so much that he built himself a whole barn. And he had a whole barn full of things that he had bought at auctions and garage sales. And I remember one time, grandpa went and bought this box of junk. And he brought it home, and then he made me unpack it. So I wasn't very happy about that. And I said, Grandpa, what is this box of junk that you got? He said, son, I know it doesn't look like much right now, but it's an Amish buggy. And it's worth $30,000. And I'm, as I'm looking at this thing that's rusting, full of cobwebs, and it looks like a family of raccoons had had a vacation in there, I'm wondering, are you serious, Grandpa? And I remember I came back to his farm a few months later, and he had taken what seemed to be a box of junk, something that was beyond redeeming, and he had rebuilt that horse buggy and had won an award for it. It looked beautiful. You see, God kind of is like that grandfather who rebuilt that buggy out of what seemed to be junk. God takes the broken parts of our lives and he brings them together and he rebuilds them by his spirit. You see, out of the old comes a new creation. You see, every part of your life is redeemable. Somebody in here needs to hear that this morning. There is no such thing as being too far gone for God to come after you. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. God sees you for who you can be, not what you are. God doesn't see you for just being a mess up, but God sees you as a son and daughter of the living God. You see, we can rejoice this morning and we can experience true happiness because we know that God can give us joy, Mother Guilford, through new life. So not only does real joy come from God making things right, Real joy also comes through the new life that God gives to us. But finally, God gives us joy by journeying with us. You know, we all have moments in life where it kind of maybe feels like we're out there on our own. Maybe it's in school. How many of you kids are taking tests right now or doing science projects? Cody, you're doing some. Uh, my kids, you all got the winter showcase. Sister Tatiana is going to be performing a solo, right? Yeah, so you're literally on your own when you sing that. Uh, maybe you feel like you're on your own at work. Not everyone else is, is necessarily sharing the same values that you do. Maybe you feel alone because you're going through a health challenge. 
and you don't feel like anybody really understands. Or maybe you had something happen to you and you feel like no one really gets you and they don't understand where your struggles come from. We all experience moments where it might feel like we're on our own. But here's the good news this morning. We are never alone if we follow God. If we follow God, God is with us as we journey through life with all of its challenges. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. You are not alone as long as you follow God. Now, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. Yes, I read books in, in school. That was the club I went to, as my niece told me the other day. Because, I, you know, I told her, I said, you know, when I was in school, I went to the club. And she's like, Uncle Aunt, you went to the book club. You didn't go to no club. And she was right. I was actually part of the book club. But one of my favorite books in school was The Lord of the Rings. Anybody like The Lord of the Rings? I love The Lord of the Rings. And, and Frodo Baggins, who's one of the main characters, he has a friend that accompanies him everywhere. His name is Samwise Gamgee. And Sam sticks with Frodo through this entire ridiculously long story. Even to the point where Frodo gets to the very end of his journey where they've all almost lost their lives like hundreds of times at this point, and Frodo almost doesn't complete it, Sam says, throw the ring in the fire. Do it. Sam is a good friend to Frodo through the good and the bad. Sam always sticks it out with Frodo. You know, in some ways, just like Sam stuck it out with Frodo, God will stick it out with you and I. Let me say that again. God will stick it out with you and I. You know, there's an old song that says, take the Lord with you wherever you go. That's because God will go with you wherever you go. So whether you're on the mountaintop and things are good, God is there with you. Maybe you're in the valley and things seem pretty dark. God is there with you. Maybe things are just okay. You need to know that God is with you. You see, there's a reason that Isaiah says that those who walk on the way called Holiness Mother Guilford, they're going to enter into Zion and everlasting joy will be a crown on their heads. It's because they've gone that whole journey and they've gone on that journey with God. They realize that they are not alone and that God is journeying with them. You know, when we have godly joy, we know that God will make all things right one day and injustice will cease. When we have godly joy, we know that our imperfect lives are daily being perfected by the perfect God. When we have godly joy, we can put one foot in front of the other no matter what we face because we know that God is with us each step of the way. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to be on that way called holiness. I want to be traveling with God through the good and the bad. Because I know that God will bring joy, unspeakable joy. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to be on that way called holiness. I want to be with the God who is there before I was there with him. I want to be with that God who loved me while I was yet in sin. I want to be with that God who loved us so much that he came into our world. He came into our mess to show us that he loved us. So here's my challenge to you this morning. Son, you can, you can start the music. At the end of the day, we must realize that real joy, if you're looking for it, it is only going to be found in God. I don't know what your situation is this morning. I don't know what you're walking through. I do know that some of us are walking through some challenging things. Maybe you're not walking through something that's challenging, but maybe you're trying to do life without God. What I do know is this, if you aren't following God, it's not possible to experience real joy. It's not possible to experience that joy that will go with you through whatever you're experiencing. And I believe that God wants somebody to experience joy this morning. So here's my challenge to you this morning. Everyone close their eyes wherever you're at. Here's my challenge to you. If this morning you would say, Bishop, I'm not following God. I'm not following God this morning. But I want to experience that joy. I want to experience that joy that comes from a well that is bottomless. I want to experience that God who will travel with me wherever I go. I want to experience life with this God who brings me life. I want to experience joy that comes from this God who makes things right. If that's you this morning and you want to begin to follow Jesus, 
Don't wait another day. Don't wait another hour. But begin to follow him right now. Because I can guarantee you this, your life will never be the same. So if that's you this morning, and you say that I want to take this moment right here, and I want to commit myself to following God as we are in this new season. I want to commit my life to following the God who loved me before I loved him. If that's you this morning, I want you just to to slip up your hand right where you are. No one's looking around. If that's you this morning, Amen. Amen. Now here's what I want us to do. Because I don't want us to embarrass one another. But right where we're at, I want us to gather in circles. I want us to hold hands for a moment. So you can stand up right where you are. I want us to gather in circles. Turn around and face the person around around you. Gather in little circles. I want you to begin to pray for the person on your right and the person on your left. And I want you to begin to pray that they would experience joy in this season. I want you to begin to pray that they would experience the God who brings joy. So just begin to pray for your person on your right and your left at a conversational level. Come on. Pray that they would experience joy. Pray that they would experience God's goodness. Pray that they would experience happiness that comes from God. Pray that they would experience new life. Pray that they would experience that joy that comes from the God who makes things right. Pray that they would begin to follow the one who brings joy in our life. Lord, we want to experience your joy. God, we want to experience your grace this morning. So I pray right now for my friends, God, that you would work in each of their lives. God, that you would give them a joy that is rooted in following you. That God, as they begin to reach out to you, God, that you would reach back to them in their situation. Lord, that you would right every wrong. Lord, that you bring justice to every injustice. Lord, and I pray that they would begin to carry this new life with them everywhere they go. That people would see that there's something different about them. Lord, that the joy that comes from you would just bubble forth. God, and that people wouldn't be able to ignore and they'd say there's something different about that man. There's something different about that woman. And Lord, as we're in this Advent season, I pray that you would give us joy. That you would give us joy in our comings. That you give us joy in our goings. That you give us joy at work, joy at school, joy in our families. But Lord, most of all, we would find joy from being in relationship with you. God, because there is no greater joy. There is no greater happiness than that happiness that comes from you. We pray this in your name. Let the church of God say amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 Isn't God good this morning? I'm trying to sit down, but isn't he good this morning? When I think about the Lord and what he's done for me, when I think about how Jesus took an angry teenager and he called him into the ministry, when I see that Jesus took me, somebody who has struggles, somebody who's not perfect, and what he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. I don't know about you this morning, but I look at my life and I see God working and I say hallelujah. Isn't God good this morning? Oh, he is good this morning.